three algorithms recursion part three algorithms recursive part everything how is sort of getting related okay how you know what are the things that you learned here okay first and foremost you learned about what is known as searching for an element right what was the time complexity in that and always remember everything is represented in terms of theta only theta of n then you find out uniqueness of an element okay that was with regard to theta of n square then you found out what is known as a matrix multiplication this is everything under iteration part okay what's the meaning of iteration the for loop the while loop all such things okay generally for loop which we have used now matrix multiplication okay they the theta of n cube this was a thing that we found out okay this is what we sort of you know found out in iteration then when it comes to the recursive part okay in the recursive part again we found out three important things here okay first one was with regard to factorial of a number very very important part the factorial number okay uh, where it was again theta of n then you found out what is known as what binary you know give giving the binary number and then find, finding out what is the number of digits you have in that okay then in the previous session i think yesterday you found out one more which is tower of an i which you again would have studied way back in your third sem also okay you found out this also now you see time complexity of all these things time complexity of all these things now among these two question one question is for sure when it comes to exam okay he is very very sure that you know before we go into the exam part okay mm. who are these people okay why you people are coming through some other ideas start gonna work okay so you see it's been long long time okay now don't tell me to again go back to the same old thing of coming to guest ideas it's not gonna work see this is what we basically found out using everything you can sum up like this if you can sum up an entire syllabus like this then it becomes very very easy for you to study okay it becomes very easy and you know a uh, few people all those people who find it you know deducing all this the equations difficult practice okay got to practice anyway i'm going to send the written notes of all those things probably by this weekend okay see uh, notes everything again it's all stuck in college and uh, you know we we know right we are basically working through from work from home uh, thing okay it's all stuck in college so once i get it i'll probably send it Okay, by this weekend, okay, we will be sending you the written notes of it. But the PPT anyway, whatever that is there, will be sending. Okay, so the so now we move into the last part of. It. What is the last part? All those things which you already know. Okay, all those things which you already know. So we are going to look into this. Not going to take much time. Will be up to around two fifty of time. Okay, because anyway at three o'clock I have to again go and attend that meeting. Okay, you people also have it on Thursday. Okay, so let's go into that. Okay, so what are the things that we have? Okay, well, in this slide, what are the things to be learned? The last part of it, there are basically having two parts in this. Now, what are the two parts that you got to keep in mind here? They're going to talk about the important problem types. Okay, important problem types, and then the second part of it will be, you know, the data structure aspects. Now, all these things would have studied, you know, in your either in your second sem or third sem. That is for sure. Okay. Now, what are the things that we have? First, let's look into it. Okay. First and foremost, important problem types. What are these there? You have sorting. You have searching. You know what is you know what is sorting. You know what is searching. Then you have something called as string processing. See, you are not going to explain anything here. It's only about knowing what is this. That's all. Understand the difference. It's only about knowing what is this. Nothing more than that. Okay, nothing more than that. Just have to know what it is. Of course, graph problems, then combinatorial problems. Okay, what is the meaning of sorting? You are putting some sort of a list or an array in some sort of an order. Generally, ascending order. Okay, non-decreasing is nothing but ascending order. Okay, this sorting can be done on what numbers also. Characters also, strings also, records also. Very clear, right? What is numbers? You know very clear. You know the the sorting of numbers. Characters probably would have done this, okay? Where you did what is known as when you did string programs, okay? Probably in your third sem there were certain example programs which you have done where you can sort an entire thing in based on your right from A to Z like that, okay? 
character strings records on them then to sort any student records alphabetically or you know names by names or by you know the what is the marks he got everything comes under the thing called sorting okay so what is an algorithm the algorithm can be you know any algorithm any example algorithm quick sort merge sort okay so many which you have already studied that can be sort of written here selection sort okay all those things can be sort of written here okay an algorithm is to be said to be in place if it does not require any extra memory okay in place what do you mean by in place if it doesn't require any extra memory then you call it as the algorithm is said to be in place okay then there's one more property also what is that one more property there is no algorithm that would be the best solution in all situation okay probably this is something which you sort of sort of understood way back in your when you studied all sort of sorting algorithms when do you think merge sort will be a better option when the when the uh, sorting thing is too big you need to you know sort of divide it into two parts then you sort you know sort of keep on dividing it then you merge it together then it become a sorted array when do you think you know uh, what do you call uh, the selection sort will become an easier one when the array size is very less and you want to sort it like one after other or a bubble sort when do you think it will become easier when the array size is very less when you want to compare each and every element that will become a best option so for a particular input it all depends on the particular input so that's all you know thing that it says there is no algorithm that to be the best solution in all situations it will be varying from situation to situation okay then algorithm is said to be stable if it preserves the relative order of any two equal elements in the input what is the meaning of that okay if there are two elements which are equal say you got an array which is having say 6 and 6 if it doesn't change that order 1 6 is towards one more side one more 6 is in to some more sides okay if that is doesn't happen if it preserves the relative order of any two equal elements in the input then you call it as a stable algorithm stable sorting algorithm okay then what is searching searching is searching for a key element where it can be it can be anywhere it can be an array we in general term we call it as set of elements in a set of elements you searching for a particular element which is known as key element is known as searching okay finding a given value called key element in given set of elements what is the examples you can have example is linear search you have binary search there are so many searches like that just give the ones which you know okay then the next one what is string processing okay string processing what is string string is a sequence of characters string can have alphabets it can have numbers it can have special characters and it can have combination of all these three things together okay searching for a given word this i think program you have done it maybe in your third sem example okay if you are searching for a given word in a text that's called string matching okay that's called string processing or string match then you move into the graph problems must be knowing graphs very easily because it's something which you learned very very recently okay graph is a what collection of points called vertices some of which are connected by lines called as edges okay vertices and edges two things to be kept in mind okay what are the various you know very very famous graph examples or a graphical based problems examples graph traversal what is graph traversal third sum remember third sum okay uh, what is that uh, you put it in some sort of an order dfs bfs or even before that prefix okay suffix or even before that pre order post order in order all these things na they involve what is known as graphs they involve graphs and of course shortest path problems you are going to learn this okay in the next uh, modules which you are going to see it will never be with regard to ppt it will be fully with regard to whiteboard so nicely we will be able to do the entire and the duration of our class will also increase keep that in mind okay now i'm not doing it because again it's very tricky model where you know if it becomes too much you lose interest okay 
So only I'm going with a very, very slow aspect of it. Now for the next models, to be fully related to problems where the each and every problem will be taking at least 40 minutes. So class relation will again come up to around 40, 45 minutes per day, you know, per day. Okay. It will be having shortest pro, you know, path problems from point A to point B, from source to destination. What is the shortest duration possible? What is the shortest distance possible? All those things you're going to learn it under GUST. Okay, uh, shortest path algorithm. And then of course, topological sorting. What is topological sorting? I think maybe in your third sem, I don't know. Again, it all depends on uh, whether you learned the you know, example program or not. Okay, what is topological sorting? If you want to sort of uh, arrange a graph in some sort of an order. Again, I told you the examples, right? In order, pre order, all those things. Then that's called topological sorting. Then, of course, a traveling salesman problem. Okay, traveling salesman problem, which is, you know, he has to cover all the things. Okay, has to come out. You would have studied you back in your DMS also. Okay, then what is the real life problems that you can have? The real life problems that you can have with regard to, you know, modeling how the World Wide Web will be working through. You know, you probably must be knowing how this entire internet sort of works through the entire, you know, the world. So it's called World Wide Web, right? How the entire your uh, internet application works through the entire world. That can be modeled on a graphical problem. Same with communication protocols, communication networks, and of course project scheduling. Okay, who is doing what work? Then you put it, you know, so you see one of the example of a you know, project scheduling is your merge sort, right? What is a, you know, there's a project, you split that project into maybe some parts. That again project is some, you know, split it into various parts. The project, project manager is added by a project manager. That project is split into say 40. Four teams are will be added by four team leads. After each lead, they will be having a set of you know developers, one so, you know software tester, okay, various designer, you know, engineers, all those things are will be working together. So when they put everything together, then they combine everything. That will become your what is that? That is nothing but your merge sort. Okay, that is called as project scheduling. All these things are real life examples that can be put together using graphical based solutions. And of course, what is the next thing? Combinatorial problems. What are the things that you have? It grows very fast with regard to problem size. What is this? The examples are nothing but permutations, combinations. 4C2 value is very easy. 40C13, the value is very tough to calculate. So what does it mean? It grows extremely fast with the problem size. Okay, what's the next thing? There are no known algorithms for solving such problem exactly in opposite, you know, acceptable amount of time. Permutations, combinations cannot be put through in terms of an algorithm. You have been in fourth sem now. You will very be soon in, maybe in fifth sem. Fifth sem, there is no programs only. Okay, there are very, very less number of programs. One is with regard to networks. There you are going to learn only about computer networks. Okay, how the communication is taking everything on the one lap. And the other one is DBMS lab where it's all about query processing. You're going to put data into the database. You're going to take out data from the database. So programming aspect is not there. Okay, unless and until you yourself learn maybe Python on your own. Or you yourself will be making sure that whatever your Java you are learning now in fourth sem, you're going to sort of make it even more stronger in fifth sem. Because in fifth sem, you don't have a programming lab. Okay. Of course, if you take like that, even that is not a programming app. It's more like a you are applying the concepts of mathematics in terms of programs. Okay, but nowhere you are going to write a program. Okay, which talks about how to calculate very, very big complex permutation and combination problems. Maybe you can write a program for finding out an NPR or an NCR, but when two complex related things. You think of a problems that were learnt in maybe in your third sum, you know, permutation and combinations. Can you put those entire things in form of a, you know, what do you call programs or algorithms? Very tough. Okay, that's what the second line clearly says. There are known, there are no known algorithms for solving what each problem exactly in acceptable amount of time. Okay, then 
what are the examples for it? Okay, what are the examples? If the example is very simple, again, permutations, what are combinations? Okay, permutations, combinations, finding a subset of it. What is finding of some set? When you have a set and then you want to find out a subset of it, all those things comes under what is known as combinatorial problems. Okay, now what is all this coming to? The, all these things are coming to the indicating called important problem types. Okay, how the question would be an example? The question would be, please write all these things for maybe five or six months, not more than that. Okay, not more than that. If they will not be asking anything more than that, if they ask also, you can write, write sort of write based on whatever the marks they have given. Based on it, you can either increase or decrease the number of sentences which you are trying to write. Okay, this can be easily done. But my suggestion is always go for problems where or questions where you will get full marks. Okay, the ones which you saw with regard to time complexity and all. Those things are very, very important. Okay. So let's go for the next part of it. Okay, what is the next part? The geometric problems. What are the geometric problems? Deals with geometric objects. What? Points, lines, polygons. Okay, all these things are nothing but geometric problems. Then the next one. Geometric algorithms are used in what? Computer graphics. I think uh, you are seniors probably in uh, CSE. They study computer graphics. You people don't study. You study file structures and software testing. Okay, in 6M. In 6M, they study you know uh, system software and compiler design and computer graphics. Whereas you people study file structures and software testing. Okay, IS guys. So, so that's a major difference that people can ask you. What's the difference between a CS and IS people? You need to think of 6M is there and say this is the difference. And if I am not wrong, that's the only difference. Those two subjects are the only two subjects except for you know in 8M if you are sort of taking a subject which is relatively fully is based elective okay otherwise those are the only two subjects which you explicitly learn as a difference between csc and isc okay that two in six seven well, if you sam there is no difference keep that in mind okay, anyone ask you okay what how do you think you know you are better than a csc or how do you think you are equal to csc you should always say till fifth sam we don't have any change in subjects 6M, there are only two subjects. Okay. 7M, again, same. 8M, again, same. Maybe in electives, we can choose a subject which is relatively IS. Okay. Code is code will be, you know, something like 18 IS like that. Okay. So, except that, those two subjects, everything same. Okay. Now, what are geometric problems? Anything dealing with, you know, geometrical aspects of it. Okay. Then, what are the, you know, the examples for it? The example is closest pair problem. This is not there for your you know, syllabus, all those things and all. I put it as an extra, okay, so that you'll get to know it, okay? What is closest pair problem? If you think of, you know, a group of elements, okay? Group of elements that are like, or else I'll show it here. I think it's uh, something which you people learn when you study data mining and all, okay? If the elements are sort of, you know, put through like this. Okay, it's all, you think of this one second. If all the elements are sort of segregated in a way like this. Okay, I hope you can see this. Okay, it's all segregated like the few elements are here. Now, what do you call this? You call this entire thing as outliers because majority of the groupings, everything now, they generally happen right here. If you think of it, they generally happen all the grouping right happens here itself but these are basically outliers uh some things which are somewhat outside the uh, you know pixel ferimetry okay and how can you find the distance between the very very few closest ones okay how can you find the distance between these things okay see all these things now you learn about these things when you study about what is data analytics and all okay what is outliers all those things because so what is the meaning of outliers in data analytics? If there's any data which is somewhat, you know, varying from the regular data, then you call that as, you know, the outlier data on earth. Now you are going to group the based on certain parameters. You're not going to group like, you know, how I'm doing it, okay? But you're going to group all these things based on certain parameters which will be there, okay? So how do you calculate the distance between these points? That is where the, you know, the algorithms like this comes into picture, okay? 
Who is that? Yeah. Closest pair problem, convex hull problem, all those things. It's not there for you, but if you are interested, you could always go and search what is that meaning of it. Okay. Convex hull problem under this. I'll show it here itself. Okay. Just open the Google. I'll show convex hull problem. The closest pro problem you understood, right? Convex hull problem. Then, of course, you have what is known as numerical problems. What is numerical problems? Any problems that basically involve mathematical equations, equations coming together. Okay, you have integral functions, everything. The majority of such problems are, can be solved approximately. Okay, they can all be solved using your approximate values of it. Okay, so those are known as your entire important types of problems. Uh, I put uh, the geometric problems and numerical problems as extra, so it will get to know. Okay, you could always write all these things for five to six months of whatever the marks they ask. You should be sort of able to write that. Okay, that's very very important. Okay. Again, it's a question which will be coming right at the last. So make sure that people are sort of writing it. OK, then let's go to the next one. The next one. The next part of it, OK, the next part of it is something which you again have said it is with regard to structures, data structures. Fundamental data structures is what they call it. OK, so what are the things that you have in this? The things that needs to be done and what are the things to be kept in mind here. Okay, see this data structures is a particular problem. You know, you must be knowing the definition of it. Okay, particular scheme of organizing the data items. That's why it's called data structure. Okay, then what are linear data structures? Your arrays and linked list. Now people may be thinking what are non-linear also. Okay, we'll get to see that. Okay, what is first linear data structures? You got your arrays, you got your linked list. What is an array? You must be knowing this because you studied way back in second sum. It's a sequence of n items of same data type that are stored contiguously. What's the meaning of storage contiguously? One after other. That's why called as an array in a cupboard of memory and made accessible by what? The taking out the value arrays index. Okay. So you must be knowing. Okay. A of 10, A of 20. Don't forget all those things. Okay. So what is arrays? It's the simplest of examples. Okay. So what is it? Fixed length, they'll be having fixed length because you are going to give the length of it. Contiguous memory locations, one after other. Direct access, you can easily take the value of it based on specifying the index of it. You can do insertion, you can do deletion. What are the various types? One dimensional, two dimensional, and of course, multi dimensional arrays. Okay, you can see very clearly what is the first index, what is. See, you, you know, when, the, when you go for these questions now, nah, you can go berserk. You can go write whatever you have learned way back in second sem, third sem, neatly and put it here. Okay, so that is something which you got to know. Again, very rarely they may ask this question also. That is something again you have to keep in mind. Okay, now watch. Next is linked list. Very, very important topic in third sem. I don't know how many of you sort of neatly understood this topic in third sem. It's a topic which people need to, you know, sort of go through in deep. Okay, I see what is a linked list in very simple words. You will be having two fields. One field will be having a data value. A other field will be having address value to the next field. Okay, a sequence of zero or more nodes, each containing two kinds of information. One will be data. Other one will be a link or an address to the next node in the linked list. What are two types of it? Single linked list. Which we'll be having, you know, you will be seeing it. Okay, singly linked list, doubly linked list. I think there's circular linked list also. Okay, circular listings also, which you probably would have studied in your, you know, third sum. Okay, so now what is it? It's of dynamic length. The length keeps on changing. Okay, arbitrary memory location. There's no fixed memory location. Their access, you know, how do you access it? They access by following the links. Okay, following the links. Here also, you can do the insertion, deletion, everything easily. Okay. Again, write a diagram for it like this. You need to write a diagram to just to show what it is on all. Okay, need to neatly you have to write everything. So you see that you will be having five, seven, three, four. There are the data. And the next one is the address for the next one. Okay, next data. And of course, doubly linked list in two ways. The single linked list will be having your head and tail. Okay, based on whatever you call in third sum. Okay, 
same with regard to doubly linked list see the next one then you see the array elements okay item 0 item 1 all those things okay array of n elements and then you again you see linked list again you know represented like this you have an item then item 1 then item n minus 1 last one will always be having null okay there are see null comes in two places a string will always end with a null character a linked list will always have a null character at the end specifying the end of a linked list okay two place where you got to keep in mind on if you sort of initialize any value to null it is having the zero value or it will not be having any value okay doubly linked list of n elements next the list okay the list under list two things that you need to study stacks you must be knowing stacks okay what is stacks you are going to put data in a way that the last one will be coming out of first one you what you call it as last in first out okay last in first out first out a stack of plates insertion deletion can be done only at the top okay all this elements everything okay so i'm not put everything in detail because this is something which you already studied okay don't want to repeat of same i don't want to repeat second or third time again so make sure that you people are sort of knowing this okay there's nothing new if there is anything new i'll be putting going in detail so there are two operations basically you can perform in the push operation pop operation push is putting data into it pop taking data out of it then what's the next one queues example of it a queue of customers waiting for services when you have queue of commerce you know customers working for services it basically means insertion okay from the rear end deletion from the front end or in all simple words you call it as fi fo first in first out okay first in first out what are two operation you can have nq and dq same you know nq and dq are basically based on priority queues if i'm not wrong right you would have learned priority queues also in your third sem so what is stack you can see that stack empty stack then you push the element one then you into two then three then if you want to take out two you will see that last in first out then when it comes to queue okay you can see that first one is with regard to friend other one is with regard to back okay element with highest priority will be going out element with the least priority will be staying inside based on priority queues otherwise you can just represent using the normal queues only okay like that these are the things that you got to keep in mind okay so what are things that you study you studied uh, right from stacks you say queues before that you had you know what is a uh, linked list before that you had no arrays all these things are there right what's the other one that is remaining and of course the next one graphs okay the other one is nothing but the graphs okay in graphs what are the things that you study same thing whatever you studied in the previous things those things only you are going to study now so what are the things that you have here okay the things that you have here is what is a graph a graph is you can see very clearly that we are talking about a pair of two sets right will be having you know v and e what is v set of vertices e set of edges both directed and directed there you know first one is very much undirected second one is full of directed graph okay then you can even represent the entire graph using your adjacency matrix wherever you have the value you put one wherever you don't have it you put zero okay so you can write it like this a to a a to b all this this is nothing but a adjacency matrix of the previous graphs what you saw 